Well, this week, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration revoked its emergency use authorization for hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine in the treatment of COVID-19 patients. It says these anti-malaria drugs have more risk than benefits for patients. So what does that actually mean when doctors uh, hear this? And how does that impact if they've been using it for other things? With more on this is Dr. Chad Demang, a North Shore physician. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. So when the FDA does something like this, taking back this uh, emergency use authorization, um, does it impact what you can do with it as a physician? Does it impact clinical trials, checking into it? Yeah, I think the first thing to help people understand what exactly is the role of the FDA. What the FDA does for physicians and drugs is they approve drugs for certain indications. So you hear FDA approval and you hear non-FDA approval. The real importance of the FDA is to determine the safety of a drug for, for human use. And they wanna make sure that the benefits outweigh the negatives. But that doesn't mean you have to use that drug only for what it's FDA approved for. Many drugs that we use, hydroxychloroquine being an example, are used for non-FDA indications. And that's, I think, is important for people to understand. And, and the frustrating part about all this with, with the COVID-19 is we just can't seem to get any consistent medical information. You know, the CDC, the FDA, uh, the WHO organization, it's wear a mask, don't wear a mask, you know, this drug help, this drug. And, and it just, even as physicians, we just find ourselves much like the rest of the world. Where do we go? What, who do we lean to? Uh, when you look at hydroxychloroquine, I actually looked at some of the studies before I came on. There's been several studies published in, in high-level medical journals such as the Lancet that have been retracted. And a lot of these studies that are showing the, the, the issues with the cardiac were done inpatient. They were not done on outpatient. And these patients have so many comorbidities, it's hard to determine if where they say the risk outweigh the benefit, what that statement means. Is that for someone on a ventilator? Is that someone that's just coughing from COVID-19? Is that an asymptomatic patient such as the president? It's just very convoluted. So we've known that this drug has been around for a while. It's been used for other things. So when the FDA re removes this um, emergency authorization use, um, does that mean you can't use it to, to treat if you want to use it for COVID or use it for something else? What does that mean when a drug gets that category? Yeah, so about 60% of the drugs we write as physicians are used for non-FDA indications. So in my line of work, we use a medicine called gabapitin and rotten for nerve pain. And the majority of patients I give it to are not indicated the FDA label for diabetic neuropathy. I use it for all types of nerve pain. So this statement doesn't mean a physician cannot use hydroxychloroquine. I know family medicine doctors here in Hammond that have seen excellent results. Now, that's just anecdotal evidence. But again, it doesn't remove the ability of the doctor to write the medication. It's just telling them to be a little more aware of possible side effects. Got it. Lastly, I know you've, you were very concerned about people who were scared to go to their doctor, you know, especially those who are most vulnerable to COVID, heart disease, lung disease, obesity, et cetera. Are you seeing them coming back and getting treatment instead of letting it get worse? We are seeing it. It's getting better, you know, but as we see an improvement, Things change, you know, they're concerned about other waves happening. So it, it kind of is a little bit of a roller coaster. You know, we see improvements, and then we don't. Um, I can say for my end, uh, we talked a little bit earlier, I'm not doing as many telemedicine visits as I had been. So I'm seeing a lot more patients in person, which is important. You know, examining a patient is important. Uh, but I am seeing a little bit of improvement and I'm seeing people, you know, taking their chronic medical issues a little more serious at this point. Right, because I know your message is don't let other diseases get you really sick because that could be even <sighs> equally detrimental, right? Yeah, just be aware. I mean, again, this hydroxychloroquine is a great example. You know, medical misinformation right now is everywhere. And I think, you know, people need to talk to their physicians, be aware of what's real, what's not. And again, it's frustrating because we used to lean on organizations such as the CDC and WHO and FDA. And now you're going to extremes. One, one week they say something and the next week they say something else. And, you know, again, as we've discussed many times, when you have a chronic medical comorbidity of heart disease, lung disease, don't let all this misinformation take your focus off a disease that is readily in your life and looking at you every day. Right. Heart disease, lung disease, all those things, those things kill as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Absolutely. doctor. Thank you, Liz. Always a pleasure.